window they have. Oh, no, it's that one, but then... Well, uh, and you see in the title, I'm not uh, very good uh, by summarizing and stuff. <laughs> Uh, so I will try to, to go as fast as possible. Uh, uh, and I believe the best dynamic is that uh, I will try to make that, uh, but you interrupt me every time that I just go too fast or, or misspoken something that somebody uh, you know, uh, didn't understand. But, um, the general layout of the talk is, is, is this one. Um, we are doing inference over metabolic networks. I believe uh, explicitly uh, the, nobody have talked about constraint-based modeling like uh, the, the canonical kind of, 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 the <clears throat> of the model that have been developed the last two decades or so with the larger variability of the networks. The second is just a description of, of the environmental condition we are interested in, that is the Newton limitation uh, condition. Uh, we will define what we mean by that because all these uh, concepts are more or less uh, very flexible. Then we will uh, try to uh, make concrete uh, these this, uh, restrictions that we are uh, first in, encounter in, in, a, in a microscopic level, experimental level, by defining a microscopic kind of, of definition of what we mean in the terms of constraint-based analysis by Newton limitation. That is using the Shannon Prime's concept, concept that is very easy actually. Then we will uh, formally uh, make the questions we are attempting to answer, which is spoil, spoiler alert, uh, the, the research is beginning, so we have few good uh, news, but we are have an important bottleneck that I, I believe uh, everybody here can help me at the end. Uh, then we will see where the issues are in trying to implement in this uh, with some example. Then we, uh, we will uh, talk about some solutions we are thinking about and then the exploration results. It's very abstract, sorry. <laughs> I, will, I will concrete now. Okay, uh, genome scale metabolic network. I don't know if those are the letters they meant with, uh, with the short version of that. It is just a list of the reactions that we model that are supposed to be involved in the metabolic uh, process. Hopefully, uh, the, the metabolism had a, a, finger, uh, a, a fingerprint in the genome because any meaningful reaction have an, an, a, a catalyst associated with that, with, with it, that is a protein, so we have the sequence in the genome. So we can more or less uh, automatize the derivation of new uh, networks. I believe it is very different from somebody, I don't know, starting the reactions inside a volcano where there is no genetics there. They need to go there and to measure the reaction to, in order to, to talk at this level. And we see uh, a paper very recent, sorry for my citation style, those are my Sotero key, key words, sorry. Uh, this is a Parson team just uh, released this paper with a bunch of, a large number of, of, of of reaction from the microbiotes uh, in, in the guts, which may give a sense of the scale of the variability uh, today of this kind of, of models. And so they, they are supposed to be pretty complete in the sense that they will try to reproduce the full set of enzymes that are registered in the, in the, in the food. Okay. They mathematically can be uh, formalized uh, just writing the stoichiometric uh, metrics that describe the, the, the reactions where the columns are the reaction and, and the rows are the metabolized. At the end, for modeling purposes, not all the reactions that you include in, in the stoichiometric matrix are enzymatic reactions. You do, for instance, the, the same biomass modeling is involved there. It's not an enzymatic per se, or also a lot of transform, a transformation. Um, in this kind of system, our state vector, variable vector will be all the fluxes that are uh, involved in the, in, the, in the metabolite at a given moment. Um, uh, and and we, can, we can write down a, a, a first constraint. This is like uh, the, just a matrix multiplication be, between the psychometric matrix and, and the 
and the, and the vector of variables. And that is just saying that uh, any change in the concentration of a metabolite, I, for instance, it is due to uh, the combination of the reaction that are producing this metabolite and the, and, and the reaction that are consuming this metabolite. It's very simple. It is very similar to what we saw in ecology in, in the tutorial uh, yesterday. Um, that defined, because all their construction are, are linear and unbound, unbound, unbounded space, so it is useful or indispensable to um, bound the, 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 the reactions set in these two limits, L and U, that are just saying that we expect the fluxes to be between these ranges. Um, finally, what this does is to, to, to produce a space solution. Uh, in any, I don't know, in any realistic uh, example, the space is degenerated, which means we have more variables than constraints. So the best we can do it is to, to restrict life to be inside somewhere inside this space. I am a biologist uh, for formation. For me, that was actually uh, <laughs> a surprise that we can at, at least bound life uh, so formally. Um, and at the end, uh, mathematically speaking, it is a convex polytope, which really helps to do a lot of the analysis we can do in this space. Okay? Um, there we see one of, 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 of the classical example. This is also a Parson paper. We see a, project, a projection of this sample uh, solution space into three dimensions. It is highly dimensional space for most cases. Uh, there it is for, I believe it is for E. coli, and we see two uh, exchange reactions in the, in the horizontal axis, uh, so the carbon source and oxygen. And then we see in, 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 the, in the zeta axis, I don't know, uh, the biomass, and we can, we can see that they are trying to, to draw this, this wall that is defining the space. And then we see these dots, our, our experimental data, and we see that um, biomass maximization actually works sometimes, uh, because you see that uh, they are in the edge of, of that uh, polytope. And the end, these models are extremely useful, and usually are a very good starting point for modeling metabolism, because they have a uh, consistent interface where you can put new data into, into both of those type of constraints. You can put, for instance, usually the, the model are already shipped with some thermodynamic data. For instance, like we, we more or less know that a given reaction is irreversible in a given direction. And that you can simulate it, but uh, I, I'm not. Doesn't work. Oh, yes, so how can I, okay. It, you can simulate an irreversible, just for, for illustration, an irreversible reaction by setting one of these two bounds to zero, and the other to be an infinite value that, <coughs> in numerical terms, is just a very large number. And, and this way, we, we can have this thermodynamic data in, in introduced in, in the system. Um, the second kind of information is, is less we say less objective in some sense, that we can put into the model it is uh, establishing or defining an operation over this space. This is the case of FBA with the maximization of the entropy. This objective function, uh, the maximization of the biomass, sorry. This uh, uh, objective function you can see it as, as a parameter also. I'm uh, sorry, that is one of the disadvantages of this kind of methods that Sometimes it's very hard to, to establish which is uh, a good objective function. I don't know the time. Um, okay, so this is the branch of how to model metabolism. I don't know if somebody has any question about what I say. Okay, uh, so pause those branch. I have an, a, a parallel one that will start now. It's a, another thread. That is the, the, the kind of experimental condition we are interested in. Okay, I will put an example in a chemostat. It's not necessarily uh, restricted to chemostat, but I like more chemostat. Um, uh, we are talking about nutrient limitation. Uh, what, what I mean by that? Sometimes experimentalists just tell you, oh, I make this culture and have all this amazing data. And, uh, and as a footnote, sometimes it is uh, uh, not really central. Sometimes you say, okay, it is nutrient limited. And I know, I happen to know that the glucose is the, the limited nutrient. And what more or less formally that means it is that they can kind of establish a connection between moving uh, a parameter that is defining or controlling the, the input of this nutrient 
with some parameter that is linked with the grow or, or something that you are measuring the culture. And in the case of the chemostat, the grow rate itself, the culture is fixed. We are talking about the steady state. So they are illustrating some kind of nutrient uh, uh, limitation by those two graphs where you have time in the, in, in the uh, horizontal axis and then you see in the left are the concentrations of two of the, of the components of the p medium. Let's say, I, I believe I named that glucose and, and ammonia. It's like the carbon source and nitrogen source. And we can see that uh, the first one, we can perturb it and we don't, we don't get a response in the, in the biomass. But then when we do the, the nitrogen uh, source, uh, we, we, see, we see a response. That's, that's what means, for instance, in this case, to be nitrogen limited. More or less, it's that uh, uh, high level, and you can define it probably in, in other ways, uh, uh, but it's equivalent in the sense that it's just establishing a, re a relation. You can, you can see a picture that is le less local, say, and here the, per the perturbation is around a value. Here you see the more, I, I believe, common one, that is just you, you, you do a range of concentration. This is actually experimental data from E. coli, uh, studying iron limitation. Uh, of course, I, I, iron is a micronutrient, so you have very small uh, concentrations. And you see that it, they have the two typical regimes, one in which we plateau, and so th that just means that at, at those high concentrations, something else is the limiting. You know, the biomass start uh, end, end re responding to, to change in this, this, in the, in, in this uh, substrate. But here in the, in, the, in the starting region, we can actually pretty much sometimes uh, fit it with the line. We see that, that the biomass is, is highly sensitive to that. Okay. What is the, the problem with that? Okay. We will try to now formalize a concept of nutrient limitation in the context of the metabolic model that we were talking at the beginning. Okay. Because this is very high level. And the other, we can see it as as the macroscopic uh, the description of the culture. This is just um, how an observable is behaving. You know, it's a bold kind of, of constraint. Okay, we would do using a very straightforward uh, concept that is a shallow price. I believe price comes because from, from economy, because I believe they use it there first, which is actually very in tone with, with, with the school. And the shallow price just uh, the ratio between the two magnitudes that you are trying to measure the relationship. In, in this case, we'll be focusing on this very specific uh, uh, shallow price uh, formulation. We are saying that in, 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 in the top that we are, no, okay, it's better to start from, from the bottom. In the bottom, we are just saying, okay, we will fluctuate the exchange rate of the upper bound of the exchange rate of one of the nutrients. And this is important. You will always refer, in the, the, the lowercase use, we always refer to a, an exchange reaction. Here, here we have a, a network that, as an example, we have two nutrients that are uh, uh, potentially being taken by the cell. Okay, what we're saying here is that we will, of this reaction, to touch the, the, the upper bound and we can do a fluctuation and then we can measure a response on the maximum uh, biomass. Um, uh, rate that we can achieve given that fluctuation. So we are assuming a lot of stuff there. For instance, we are assuming that our jet diffusion is already the, the, the maximization of biomass, which is make less general our work here, but we, we are trying to, to do everything with the coli, which I, I was, we saw sometimes maximization works. So, and we can try to figure it out, you know, how this, this, this network that is the microscopic picture is coherent with the macroscopic picture that we did here before. And for that, I, I want to pass with you this, this network. It's, for me, it's quite simple in the sense that genome scale are big. And we can see, for instance, that all what is important is the definition of a biomass and, of course, the, the network itself, the, the way in which we can produce the components of the biomass from uh, the intakes. For instance, we see that both metabolites uh, that, that are being taken are explicitly uh, components of the myomass. First, this is sometimes tricky. This is not an algebraic, uh, algebraic, what is it, my, the mouse? 
Okay. This is not uh, an algebra uh, equation. Actually, it's that, that the chemical representation of, 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 of uh, reaction is, uh, is a Boolean equation. What we are saying is there is an, a Boolean and. You know, so we, we, we need N1 and, N2 and E. So you, we, we cannot have zero in the first one and still have a biomass. I don't know why they pick the same symbol. It's confusing. So, and, and that is important because what we're saying is that we can connect the, the upper bound of this reaction with the bounds of this one. That is what we want to, to do here. Why? Because, for, for instance, imagine that the, the bounds of N2 is infinite. Okay, we, the cell can take whatever they want. And let's say that also the bounds of N2, uh, N1 is infinite. The cell can take whatever it wants. Who can predict the values the upper bound of theta? Hmm? Yes, it's, uh, it's infinite. Why? Why? Because you can produce an infinite amount of all the components. If you see the third one is just E, which more or less resembles energy, and, and, and you have connection from both these two metabolites, and you can produce all, the, all, all what you want. So this is an unbounded uh, kind of a space, which is not obviously realistic, but it was a good test. Uh, then we, we, will, we, we can recover this uh, behavior if we just set one of the two to infinite and one to, to, uh, to be finite, for instance. But if we, we say that, that N1 have an upper bound and N2 is infinite, what we can say about the, the upper bound theta? Exactly. It, it, it will depend on how proportional linear in this case, because everything is linear, uh, to this bound of N, N1. And it is what we are seeing here. Okay? We are changing the concentration in the chemostat, which I didn't include, it, but you can relate with the upper bounds of the fluxes very, very easily. You, you, are, you are in charge of putting food into the chemostat, so the, the cell cannot eat more than what you are giving to them. At least there is some kind of blood market of, of nutrient that you are not take into account. So you can always, from concentration, that's why I, I like chemostat, you can work at the upper bounds of the network. And, and, and this way, we, saw, we see that the channel price of this infinite uh, nutrient would be zero, because uh, it doesn't matter if, 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 if end, it is finite, and I have an infinite amount of N2, when I maximize the, the, the biomass, I will hit first the limit of N1. And from there on, if I still like uh, perturb the value of, of the upper bound of N2 that is very high relative to N1, I won't see a, perfo a, a response to the biomass because actually the effective constraint is N1. This, uh, okay. um, uh -huh. this is what, what we mean, like we can formalize the nutrient limitation uh, concept in the macroscopic level. It's just that uh, the nutrient limited uh, nutrient, okay, uh, it is the one that have a non-zero shallow price, and that is that is more or less more important. Okay, this more or less is the question we want to uh, to answer. is a little bit abstract because I believe we need to start from from here. We haven't found any 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 other development that is further in the in, in the in this path. Um, we are just okay. We are doing an inference question. What I mean by that. All these constraints that are here, that the typical constraint and define this solution space, you can say that this solution space represents your current state of knowledge about the metabolism. You know the metabolism is inside uh, that, that volume, that, that is all that you know, okay? And now the experimentalists come and tell you, no, yes, but I, in addition, know that glucose is the limiting uh, nutrient. How I can now, update my space so it is coherent with this new data. Okay, it's a Bayesian kind of perspective. Um, and I don't know how to do it uh, directly. <laughs> uh, because th th this is not a linear constraint and so on. Uh, maybe it is obvious for somebody more mathematically involved. Uh, I, sorry. Uh, but, but so I will need to, to, to make a very you know, long journey to try to at least say something about this question mark there, okay? But it is important to, to have clear what we want to do. We want, the same way we can formal, formally introduce, for instance, what I told at the beginning, the 
the, the knowledge about the thermodynamic directions of the reactions, that is by tuning this upper and lower bound, we are moving our, our solution space by knowledge that we have. Okay? We want to do the same, but with this new knowledge that, is the, 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 that we happen to know the, the Newton limitation uh, conditions. Any question? How I, ah. uh, OK, this is an example. Uh, this is E. coli. Um, <clears throat> What they're doing is they're like a, a very straightforward kind of uh, experiment. They are just changing the ratio between a carbon source and a nitrogen source. Um, and as, as we discussed, this is the equivalent uh, of what we did. We, that in, my, in, in some area, we can envision the nitrogen to be infinite with respect to the carbon. And the other side, we can say that the, uh, the other way around. I don't, I don't remember what I said earlier. Um, and we see that everything moves accordingly, and I will describe that, and that you can map it also to the microscopic interpretation of the channel price. Uh, okay, here, in, in, here we have this ratio between carbon and nitrogen source, and we have, in this size, uh, if we have a small ratio, this, this means that compared with this corner here, carbon is less relevant in the culture. And if we found all these dots, we see that, for instance, this one is the nitrogen, and it is not a surprise. Oh, this is a, sorry, a chemostat. All these points are a steady state. So what they are describing is uh, the concentration of these nutrients in, in, the, in the culture, okay, at the steady state. So we see that, that the, the, the cells in this regime here, in the steady state, they are ignoring some amount of nitrogen, okay? We, we still have nitrogen in, in the culture. That means that we are feeding the, 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 the cells faster than, than what they can eat. And why they cannot eat more nitrogen? Oh, because if we follow now the squares, I believe this is the carbon source, we see that, that it is in this area very close to zero, which, which is a, a very good uh, indicator that, that that is the actually the constraint that you hit in the culture. Okay? And um, we like, kind of double check that if we start to move in this uh, ratio, if we increase the carbon, relative to the nitrogen, we start to consume more nitrogen. Why? Because remember, this is a Boolean equation. I cannot consume more carbon if I don't have nitrogen to put it together into whatever I'm producing. That is, that is the deal. So I need more carbon for use more nitrogen. And at the same time, of course, all this is being used to make uh, biomass that there is the, the solid squares. Okay? And we see that we keep moving in this direction until we hit this region here, that for this particular paper is very interesting, because they have the solution of why you have a degenerate um, range that it, it is this third or fourth, I don't know, marker here that is uh, a storage. You know, cells are, are very smart, and, and they reach a point here where they cannot keep growing, because now the nitrogen is also depleted, but they have a lot of carbon yet outside, and they say, I would not ignore that carbon. I would just start to pocket <laughs> uh, in a storage uh, kind of compound that there is this PHB. I don't, I don't uh, really know the name of the compound. Okay. But what we see is after we, we we've end off of that, we reach the mirrored part of that. Now carbon is uh, in abundance, and now the, the cell cannot even store more. It's full. The bank is full. And now we, we start to, to know that, okay. So that can be seen here doing that work that we already did, so we do fast, that, that changing which one is infinite with respect to another, we, we can work out that the shallow price will actually signal which, which one will be the limiting given the conditions, okay. We don't, we don't need experimental data other than defining which are the composition, not in terms of quantitative composition, in the sense of how much the, the culture is, is, is composed by, by glucose or not, but that it has glucose and nitrogen, for instance. It's the only data we need to, to, to reproduce this in the sense that we know that when we will be in this condition, the limiting will be uh, nitrogen and so on. And we did that here, is what, what, what is shown there. It's a little convoluted. I will try to explain, okay? As I was saying, you can take the metabolic network, this full set of reaction plus the definition of the biomass and so on, and you can start to ask the question, if your open bound 
of, of, of glucose is a given number, let's say, here, and your lower bound, or your open bound, uh, sorry, if, if, sorry, if your open bound of glucose is this number here, for instance, and your open bound of nitrogen is this one, I can ask you the shallow price of both there. All without the experimental data in the sense that this is built in in the, in the topology of the network and the biomass composition. And in this case, uh, blue means that the network is saying, oh no, here the shallow price, it is uh, non-zero only in the, in the carbon, okay? Uh, and zero in the case of nitrogen. And, and the black region is the opposite, okay? So the, the, the background is built only with the, with the networks, and I'm using two networks. Uh, this is like a, a simplified version of the, the main uh, metabolic path of E. coli. And this is a genome scale model, although old. I, I, I could actually update this picture, I should do it. Uh, we see that uh, we are looking only the background right now, forget uh, minus uh, the points. We see that they change, like this line is, is, is have a different slope and so on. And that's because it is important for building that, the stereometric and also the biomass, the biomass composition, okay? So now, how would this kind of... Yeah. Yes. Very, very quick, uh, I think this is very cool. Um, is it clear that you can only be limited by one or the other? No, that is, that is what I meant. Uh, when I, okay, you need to contextualize this model at least telling that you have a single source of carbon in this case and a single, a single source of nitrogen. This data, the kind of binary data which nutrients are outside, you are putting from the, from the experiments. Okay. I so the answer is no, but in this case we are, um, we, we are on purpose targeting this kind of cultures with these only two, two nutrients. So in this model it's true that you can be either or? We will see that that is actually why this, is, this might be useful. <laughs> yes, exactly. So um, the, I don't really understand the, the, the graph. Like every point, is that a steady state of? Uh... I haven't reached the points yet. Uh, okay. I was. Uh, I was explaining the background only. The points are, okay, what I want to, what I'm trying to express with these figures is that what the experimentalist said about the growth condition is in the sense of, of nutrient limitation match with our definition of growth uh, limitation in the, in the microscopic kind of, of the definition, which is, which is the shallow price. What we have in the background is just a map of the shallow price of glucose and, and, and ammonia, I believe, uh, which only depends on the network, okay? And then I am placing dots in the, in, on top of that, the, R, uh, the red one are dots of experimental uh, data that the experimentalists actually say, no, we know that the carbon, for instance, it is uh, the limiting factor. And we see that all the, the, rod, the red one are Maybe not very clearly in the area where they should be, but at least they are higher than the rest. The blue ones are the mirrored image. The, the experimentalists are telling us that, yes, this culture, it is in nitrogen limitation condition. And what, what I do, the, the coordinate is actually the, the, the flux values of the culture, okay? What, 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 I, what I mean is, I should maybe do that. If you only give me the fluxes, I can predict more or less what was the condition that the experimental, experimentally would tell me. Because you, you, you see that all the, the carbon, the carbon uh, defined in the upper part compared with the nitrogen ones, and more or less this is the same uh, uh, distribution of the two phases. The, the exact boundary depends on the bi uh, biomass uh, composition with I, using the one that come by default. In the, in, in the genome scale network, so uh, it is not a surprise that it's not very tuned to the data in this case. I'm, I'm showing other points, I'm showing the, the iron limitation points to know that they have no reason to be anywhere in particular. And these little stars here are, if, if I ask the, the, the network, okay, which is the perfect ratio of nitrogen and carbon, so any, anything is left in the medium, it, it, it reach it, it fall in this uh, boundary, uh, which means both we have a non-zero shallow price, okay? Uh, which more or less give us some interpretation to this boundary. So, any questions to now? I see. 
Uh, at what time I need to end? Five minutes. In five minutes? Yes. It's the hard truth. It, it was a disaster already, okay. Well, uh, as the question uh, he asked, uh, when, when we have more than, than a simple uh, nutrient in the, in the culture, everything is uh, like uh, more difficult. Actually, it, it is hard to solve. For instance, this is data from, from bacteria where we have in the same medium uh, several nutrients. You know, the, this is a batch, this is time, and this is the initial concentration con, uh, of the nutrient. We see that all these nutrients here are, are carbon source, everybody, are uh, at the same time. And we see very, very interesting that, for instance, the cell can do anything <laughs> almost, like, for instance, in, uh, ignore everybody and just consume glucose. But of course, our problem is not necessarily to explain this, it is to try to see what we can do with the network that is actually missing all this action. Why? Because again, what we can say about this culture at the beginning is just that you can eat all these options. And if I contextualize the network this way, the network do something very differently. Usually it just eats everything as much as it can, okay? So that, that is uh, that the conclusion of this part is that in, in the context of what we call complex medium, that is this medium that have redundant nutrients, the definition of the shallow price is not enough because in this condition, the network will give you that everybody have a shallow price. And that is not what the experimental data tell you. So in the three minutes I have, I will really uh, try to, to, to give an intuition about what I try to do here. I cannot do it analytically. I cannot do it in that direction, so I, I will try to do it in the other direction. What I do is, okay, I will just start to perturb the, the, the culture. I will, do, uh, I will do a hit and run Monte Carlo, and then this is the, this is the kind of, of, of problem like a prime multiplication that is easy to evaluate but hard to work backwards. You know, I can give you two numbers and you can check if the third one is the, 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 the multiple of these two, but the other way around, it is all about mining Bitcoin. And, and that is what I'm using, evaluating if, if I have a single uh, a nutrient with the challenge prices is, is, is more or less, less uh, non-expensive. So what I will do is start to hit the network with, uh, with modification that can be knockouts or down regulation, that depending of, of your computational power. And what we're doing is kind of traveling for all the action space of the regulatory network. That, what I mean by that is the, the ultimate like product of the regulation, it is tuning the fluxes. What I do is just randomly selecting configuration of the fluxes. So I am kind of ignoring the rest, but not the consequence of the rest. So uh, very, uh, this is like uh, the, the Monte Carlo, then that I have all this point, I can try to separate which one actually comply with my whatever. And uh, yes, yes, okay, that is possible because, be, uh, this is a very naive approach because the combinatory of that, it is just insane, just trying to do stuff. Uh, but it is possible because actually networks are, connected. <laughs> so if you start to do modification to a network, at some point you have uh, a configuration that is not uh, interesting. For instance, nobody grow, for instance. So what we can do is start from the beginning in the sense that the original network, we know it grows and we start to perturb it till we hit uh, that network. Then we, can, we, we don't need to check in that path of uh, modification anymore. We can start from the beginning and have all the trajectory. That is what I'm representing here. And that allows us to have the combinatory effect that it is trying to make the computation feasible, exploding, but we have this boundary constraint that, for instance, we are demanding the cell to grow, which I believe it is commonsensical. And, 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 but that one is, in, 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 uh, is, is related in an inverse way to the perturbation length, to the amount of perturbation we do. And that will create a situation, and I'm, I'm finishing in, in zero seconds, <laughs> a situation in which we can do this Monte Carlo. This is uh, an example with uh, E. coli, but the core, which is, is small, is like uh, 50 uh, free degrees, degrees of freedoms, which 
is big, but not that big compared with the genomic scale. And we see that more or less we can do the Monte Carlo and, and see the effect that we were talking about. Okay? This should explode till infinite, but because we are just selecting the ones smartly, we have that. Well, now I can measure a lot of properties of all these networks and all these very good spaces. A space is very important. And a lot of properties of all these spaces, a lot of properties of those spaces. We can even do, uh, because we are not in the business of ne network contextualization, we are in the business of analysis, so we have cool tools to analyze data, so we can try to approximate the volume of the polytone and see how the information is being pumped into the network. And, uh, and, okay, and that is the current state of the research. We more or less have a, a, a method that happened to, to have some hopes or at least to do this uh, Monte Carlo. That, that, that is what we allow us at the end try to explore this space and maybe inspire us of how analytically or more efficiently to, to incorporate this constraint. Okay? But uh, our problem is, is, is actually the follow. This is the bottleneck. This is like the perspective. It is, of course, try to see if we can target more realistic networks with genome scale metabolic networks, which I believe we can. Uh, then, of course, we're generating all these ensembles and uh, biologists, so I need to learn how to more or less do a professional analysis of that. Uh, but the more important thing, and I believe is something that maybe you can help me, it is, this is the, the example from, from, from the, the talk we, we saw yesterday, that they, they have this, kind of same situation, they, they define in space by sampling all, but they have these pretty uh, points there that is experimental data. <laughs> and the problem we have it is the validation of stuff and the exploration of stuff is very uh, non-efficient if you run experimental data. And because we need data that is in complex medium, I don't know why, or maybe I am bad searching, but it is not like av available, and if anybody knows, I'm very open to to, to hear about that. Okay, we, we want dots. There's a dot to put on top of that. How much? Ah, three minutes. It's okay. Yes. Thanks a lot for the, for the talk. We have some time for questions. So your original plan, which did not completely materialize, included extending those results to the ecosystems, right? And ecologists thought a lot about this topic of nutrient limitation. In fact, if you consider a microbial community, then there will be uh, different organisms will have different limiting uh, molecular compounds, usually. So maybe, maybe in answering my question, you can share some of your thoughts how you plan to extend your approach to uh, communities of organisms? Well, I, I am considered to be in a humble beginning, Jeff, but, uh, but uh, the community, you can just to do a very big stoichiometric matrix of the community. So you can start perturb these stoichiometric matrix. Uh, computational, like, performance is a limitation there. We're trying to hit a single cell kind of, of genome scale levels. I don't know, maybe. Of course, that was programmed with, with some care about performance, but maybe we can start to decrease all these constants so we can use feasible, feasible performance, yes. Okay, that, that's great. I, I will let ask you that, yes. Uh, have you ever tried to solve this problem using elementary modes analysis? Because it seems like these are, they span the metabolic network and they have fixed ratios of nutrients that they take up and biomass that they produce. So I, I can imagine that they will give, well, you can kind of exclude some modes because they will never have this uh, one nutrient with a shadow price. Um, and then you can maybe select the, the right modes and only take combinations of those as your uh, inferred space? Yeah, I, I, I haven't done that. I'm probably doing very, something very similar to, but instead of iterating over the elementary modes, I'm iterating over those perturbations. 
I don't know, and I wouldn't be surprised that is the case, if which, which one is, is more efficient, and maybe doing the iteration through the elementary modes may be faster than doing more naively, just doing it randomly. It, I hope, yes, exhaustive, I don't think, well, maybe yes, I don't know, because I don't know the, the exact number of, of, of this uh, boundary condition that we can do to, to eliminate the explosion of the combination, but it is a very long shot to try to do exhaustive. I don't know, uh, m maybe I'm just uh, not uh, aware that it is feasible for, for metabolic uh, network, but I believe it is even harder than just trying to do a Monte Carlo and at least extract some statistics, only the statistics from, from the distribution. But yes, this can be done. So we have time for one last question. Okay, yeah, I first wanted to say it's very cool to see like these old papers from uh, like late 90s, Thomas Igley, and then see I, this. I, I really like the style. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a different era, yeah. and then can sort of People fuse don't it. don't let you put your yours this way in the, in the <laughs> yeah. um, Fuse it with the, the metabolic model. I, I, there's another piece of theory that's kind of old, um, and this is metabolic control analysis. Um, they also talk about control on fluxes. Um, I'm not, I don't know this theory. Maybe people in this room uh, know this better. I would definitely be interested to understand it. Have you established any connection with metabolic control analysis? No, not, not, not that I am aware, <laughs> yes. but I will look it up. Uh, I had also a question on that. when you do the Monte Carlo, so you, you perturb your system till you get to a neighbor, and so that's your new, uh, new path. But if you have many, how do you decide which one the cell will prefer? Right now, I'm doing a little bit sm a smart thing, that is I'm only iterating the three degrees of, of freedom. I can try to do memory stuff and so on to make more efficient the, the path, but I, I'm doing randomly. I'm not choosing where you can go. I, I'm, I'm trying to diffuse to all this space with the hope that this boundary is close enough that I will have a fixed points in the distribution with my uh, computational resources, yes. It was quite fast, but on one of the slides you, you went, there was like a distribution, there was like two stability, Regions. Okay, okay. That, is, that was that a partial, result. very nice result. This is the shadow price, for instance, of galactose. Each point is the coordinates of a bunch of these networks that we produce from, from the conceptualization. And we are have, we are, the color, the third dimension is just how many networks happen to be in this coordinate. Of, for instance, I do 50 perturbations, and this happened to have this shadow price for the galactose, is what it's saying. And there is, I, sorry. It is in a log scale, so we have a bunch of perturbation there. You know, we, we, we more or less reached sufficient amount of, of stuff. And, and I don't have an explanation. One of, of the perspective is trying to do a better analysis of this data that we already have. I'm not very happy with that in the sense that we can only extract topological information from a network that is a simplification. So I, I, I wouldn't wait till do this in the real uh, genome scale so any insight that we have, it is actually validated. That is something that I didn't show, but that this is how close the core uh, cloud resemble a cloud that you compute in the, in the big one. And because we are modeling growth, we see that the, actually this core model is, is, is reached, at least in, in biomass, that is this uh, point here, more or less a good correlation. Which is no surprise because the core metabolism is called core. <laughs> for something, and so, yes. One very last question. Really, really <coughs> short. Um, I, it's something I genuinely don't know. How good is FBA at predicting growth rates in complex media? That is the problem you have. You need to put so much information that is usually, well, it's as good as the information you put into the, <laughs> into the model. That, that's the short answer. The a typical, Non, uh, for instance, no contextualized network is, 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 is just wrong. It will give you the addition of everybody being taken. So in this, in, in this, in this case, the case, uh, in this case, it will give you literally what you will produce with taking all this carbon. Because you don't have any internal constraint 
that is limiting the network uh, in a way that, that prevents everybody to enter. So it, it is bad, but it is not a fault of FBA. It's, it's you are missing information. You don't have this internal control. It's, just, it's like the, the Warburg effect, that for you switching, you need to incorporate some internal control somehow. And, and it's so difficult that it's better to do a Monte Carlo to, to try to, to see if some pattern emerges. Like OK, so let's, this, let's thank the speaker again. Sorry for the, for the time. Remember the data. <laughs>